Hi everyone, my name is Bianca Casuto and I'm the Education Program Manager at the Everglades Foundation. Thank you for joining us today to learn more about the Everglades and our water supply in South Florida. Today, we will navigate through the Everglades watershed using an interactive presentation focusing on water usage, where our water comes from, and the important and uniqueness of the Everglades ecosystem. Before we dive into the presentation, Let's start off by talking about the Everglades Foundation. We are an environmental nonprofit in Miami whose mission is to protect and restore the Everglades through science, advocacy, and education. On staff, we have seven PhD scientists, policy experts, and environmental educators. I'm part of the education team. Today, we are going to be learning about our water supply in South Florida. Where does it come from? Why is it important? Who uses water? By knowing this information, we can connect communities to their water source and usage, as well as long-term planning and sustainability of water resources. We will also take a look at the Everglades watershed using models and how Everglades restoration is connected to the availability of fresh water in Florida. Everyone uses water. Raise your hand if you've used water today. Think about it. When you turn on the tap, where do you think the water comes from? It's okay if you don't know, you're not alone. Many Floridians are not able to identify where their drinking water comes from or the major industries who rely on the availability of clean, fresh water. That's why it's important to know where our water comes from so we can learn to conserve it. In Florida, 1.3 billion gallons of water are consumed per day. That's 300 million in Miami-Dade County alone. Water is not an indefinite resource. Water conservation is something that everyone can help with. Water is important to the health of the Everglades and the health of the Everglades is important to us. There are 8.7 million residents of South Florida who rely on the Everglades for their water supply. That's 40% of the state's population. When it rains in the Everglades, the wetlands act as an enormous sponge. Water seeps through a porous aquifer, which acts like an underground river. Florida cities connect to the aquifer via a series of pipes for their water supply. Water conservation is very important to the Everglades watershed and where we get our water from. A watershed is a region of water that flows into a river, a lake, a river system, or another body of water. In this case, we're referring to the KOE watershed. Let's identify the Everglades watershed on the map. The watershed spans from Orange County in the north all the way down to Monroe County in the south, and from Collier County on the west all the way to Miami, Broward, and Palm Beach counties on the east coast. The watershed is called the KOE. K for Kissimmee, O for Lake Okeechobee, and E for Everglades in the southern part of our state. That's right. The Everglades starts all the way up here near Orlando. In fact, the headwaters of the Everglades is just south of Orlando near Shingle Creek. Historically, water would flow all the way through the Kissimmee River into Lake Kissimmee, down into Lake Okeechobee, and then it would overflow into that slow moving river of grass. Now that 100 miles of river of grass would move so slowly that water from the wet season in the summer would still trickle down into the Everglades dry season during the winter. This river of grass is important because the wetlands in the Everglades would filter out the water as it trickled down into Florida Bay. Also, the Everglades has many different habitats that are shaped by water in the Everglades where many different plants and animals thrive. The Everglades also recharges the Biscayne Aquifer, that underground river system where we get our water from. But over 100 years ago, things started to change. As more people began to settle in Florida during the late 1800s, they began to channelize the rivers and divide the watershed. Politicians and landowners wanted to create land for agriculture to attract people to come live in Florida. This led to the development of land for homes, schools, and other important businesses. Today, all water movement in the Everglades, except for local rainfall, is controlled by water managers who are responsible for more than 2,000 miles of canals and hundreds of water control structures, like pumps and gates that control the flow of water, sometimes in a very different way than naturally. 
So where does that leave us now? As we mentioned, water used to flow all the way from the Orlando Kissimmee area down into Lake Okeechobee, over the River of Grass, and down empty out into Florida Bay. Now that was the K-O-E watershed. Well, since we started to divert the natural flow of water, the water that's flowing into Lake Okeechobee can't flow into that river of grass, but the water still has to go somewhere. So floodgates are opened and water that would naturally flow and filter out through the wetlands, water that's filled with excess phosphorus, excess nutrients, excess nitrogen, is pumped east through the St. Lucie River into the Atlantic Ocean and west through the Caloosahatchee River into the Gulf of Mexico. Billions of gallons of fresh water are being wasted to tide simply because we don't have a place to put it. Unfortunately, this is bad news for the Everglades and bad news for water conservation as a whole. That's a lot of water being wasted. To make matters worse, this change in direction of water flow can also cause nutrient pollution when excess phosphorus and nitrogen get into our water. This leads to toxic algae blooms that impact our environment, wildlife, our pets, and even our health. By depriving the Everglades of this water, it often dries up and is vulnerable to wildfires. We also get excess salinity conditions down in Florida Bay and saltwater intrusion into our aquifer. That means less fresh water and less drinking water for Florida. Not to mention weather patterns like droughts and hurricanes can make these problems even worse. The amount of rain that falls in the Everglades is important because that flow of water also fills up the Biscayne Aquifer. When there's no rain and polluted water in the aquifer, it's extra important to conserve water wisely. That's why Everglades restoration that helps redirect the natural flow of water in order to get clean, fresh water down to the Everglades is so important. It's also important to educate Floridians about Everglades restoration that helps with water conservation and our Everglades watershed. It's all about quality, quantity, timing, and distribution of water in the Everglades. And we know that restoration works and is important to Floridians in terms of tourism and the economy. In total, 42.5 million tourists visited the Everglades in 2017. In order to visualize what we're talking about, Kim, why don't you demonstrate for us how to build the Everglades watershed, historic and altered versions. That way we can connect to protecting our Everglades from our homes all the way to the heart of a watershed. Now we're going to build the Everglades watershed models. We're first going to start with the Everglades historic map. Starting in the Shingle Creek Kissimmee area where it meanders down into Lake Kissimmee, where it flows through the Kissimmee River into Lake Okeechobee, overflowing into the River of Grass down into Florida Bay. You'll notice we have Lake Kissimmee up at the top where it meanders through the Kissimmee River down into Lake Okeechobee. Notice how I use my thumb to press an indent into the Play-Doh so the lake could fill up with water. 
Now we also have the Caloosahatchee River on the west coast that leads to the Gulf of Mexico. You'll notice Lake Hikpachee that does not connect to Lake Okeechobee. You'll also notice the St. Lucie River on the east coast that does not connect to Lake Okeechobee. Now the river of grass expands all the way down through the wetlands down to Everglades National Park ending in Florida Bay. Now we're going to build the Everglades Altered Watershed, starting up in the Kissimmee River chain of lakes, down through the Kissimmee River into Lake Okeechobee, where water is unable to flow through that river of grass, but floodgates are open to the Caloosahatchee into the Gulf of Mexico and through the St. Lucie River to the Atlantic Ocean. altered watershed, we still start with Lake Kissimmee that flows through the Kissimmee River down into Lake Okeechobee. Water is unable to flow into that river of grass, so those floodgates we talked about are open. Water is pushed through the west, through the uh, Caloosahatchee River, into the Gulf of Mexico, and east through the St. Lucie River to the Atlantic Ocean. You'll also notice the Everglades Agricultural Area right below Lake Okeechobee. We have some water conservation areas and Tamiami Trail acts as a dike where water is unable to flow under the bridge into Everglades National Park and very little water makes its way to Florida Bay. Now it's time to test the models. Starting with the historic version, water flows from Lake Kissimmee, meanders through the Kissimmee River into Lake Okeechobee where it pools and flows over into that slow moving river of grass. That water moving so slowly is called sheet flow, where water is stored from one season to the next. You'll notice that water doesn't quite make it over into Lake Hikvachee and into the Caloosahatchee River, as well as the St. Lucie River, and that water is able to make it down into Florida Bay. Up next, we have the altered Everglades watershed. We still start up in Lake Kissimmee, where it flows through the Kissimmee River into Lake Okeechobee. Now it's unable to flow, so those floodgates open. Water is pushed east and west through the Caloosahatchee River and the St. Lucie River, and very little water makes its way down into Everglades National Park and Florida Bay. Now that we've seen the visualization of the altered Everglades versus the historic Everglades, what were some of the effects of altering the natural systems of the Everglades? Water that was once available to the ecosystem is now being sent out to the oceans, no longer available for Floridians to use. The water that flowed through the ecosystem and sustained the ecosystem through the seasons has been cut off, causing drought conditions and the water that trickled down into the aquifer is unable to recharge the Biscayne aquifer and no longer able to get into our water supply. 